So, Stephen, we're uh, for if you're new to the the channel, if you're watching uh, wherever you happen to be, you happen to tune in because of actually, I should just tweet out a quick thing here and uh, before I do that, so that people actually know that it's there. Sometimes I forget. Um, Periscope tweeted. Okay, yeah, here we go. Too many windows. What's your Twitter handle, Stephen? I, or do you um, I yeah, I've changed it recently, or maybe a year ago. Uh, it's now yeah, same as Instagram. So I think it's Steve R Penny, all as one word. Steve R Penny. Oh, Steve, uh, but not like. Yeah, S T E V E R P E N N Y. Right. I to talk as we talk podcasting and stuff. There we go. Good, 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 good. Well, at least now there'll be one person listening or watching lives of my girlfriends trying to find a link to uh, <laughs> to, to, listen, to listen from the next room, in fact. So <laughs> she'll get some horrific echo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll tell her to type into the chats uh, somewhere, wherever she is, so I can she can at least I can verify that something's working anyways, if, if nothing <laughs> else here. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's always a funny thing. Looks like everything's going on. Anyways. Um, yeah, if you're new to, uh, if you're just watching, tuning in randomly from a tweet or from a notification or whatever, this is a podcast I do uh, generally with my partner Kyle at goodstuff.fm, and uh, we've been doing a podcast where we're talking just about podcasting news and stuff and how we do things at Good Stuff. Some of the, the last episode was a bit of about uh, the software that we use to re to actually publish the website, Not nothing to do with recording of audio and stuff, but just the software we're using to run the website proper, and so... Um, and then, yeah, otherwise we cover just podcasting news and we're, we're kind of trying to get into a schedule of recording, uh, regularly, but it's, you know, life happens. And so, um, Tuesdays or Friday mornings are kind of the days that seem to be, um, the days when we record. So if you're so inclined and want to follow along wherever you happen to be watching, you can subscribe obviously, and you'll probably know on YouTube or Twitch or Mixer or wherever you happen to be how best to do that wherever you are. So, uh, but it, also part of what I used to do on Show Me Mike was interview other podcasters about their podcasting setup and gear and why and how and stuff. And so that's also what I want to add back into the show. And uh, and so that's why there's a gentleman sitting to my, I guess, depending on how you're looking, my right, I guess, Stephen Penny, uh, coming to me from, coming to us from Finland, originally from the UK. And uh, Stephen was actually one of the one, not one of the first, but one of the guests on the original run of Show Me Your Mic when I was interviewing folks, and he had a different podcast back then, back in two, two, 2015, um, uh, episode 87 of Show Me Your Mic, Stephen, you were on, and uh, I think that was the Expat Podcast, sort of a tech. Yeah, world. that's it. Uh, yeah, Techpat. So yeah, there was Tech three Pats, of us right. expats talking all things, all things tech. Yeah, as as uh, most uh, podcasts tend to start, or a lot of podcasts, anyways, are. Uh, tend to be dudes talking tech. That's <laughs> what comes naturally to many of us. Uh, and so, but yeah, by way of now introducing, I guess yourself in in 2018. What's uh, what's what what got, what got you back in? What got you into podcasting? I guess originally, and then what sort of drew you back into it again? Because you that that podcast had had died a podcasting death, and then you obviously came yep. back with something new. So, uh, going back to your original sort of the what got you into podcasting? What was sort of the the draw? I think really, I think we touched on it on the uh, the other episode, but it was I kind of felt at times like I was had these opinions and these views and had nobody to kind of really discuss them with. You know, being an expat here, your uh, a kind of social circle can be quite limited at times, and there was nobody kind of really close to me here where I could talk about yeah you know, tech related things, the latest news, the latest gadgets, all that kind of stuff. So I put the kind of call out on social media to see if anybody wanted to come and chat about these things with me uh we invested a few euros here and there on some yeah not great mics and <laughs> our kind of laptops and stuff although I, I did splurge and buy a macbook pro then and recently got a new one um and yeah we we kind of went from there and did i can't remember how many shows probably nearly 100 altogether over the course of a couple of years maybe but then yeah as you say a couple of years back um 
life happens and you know one person couldn't commit to doing it weekly the other person was moving away to another part of finland to study uh, and i didn't really want to sit there and just kind of talk into the into the ether and <laughs> you know not have any kind of uh engagement with anybody i couldn't really kind of pull that off just chatting by myself so um as you say it kind of died that death and then i went went a while with no podcast and then a few different things kind of happened and things transpired and I got in touch with some certain people and then that kind of gave birth to this, uh, this new podcast that I have. Right. And so, yeah, the new podcast is called the others podcast, which, uh, the, the bio anyways, is a weekly look at the videos of Pharrell Williams, the Neptunes and nerd NERD. Is that, I, I never know if I'm supposed to pronounce it or spell it out with. I, uh, yeah. I don't think it matters. Like, officially, it's N-E-R-D, but yeah, people say nerd. Even they say nerd at times. Okay. So I don't think it makes much of a difference. Yeah. And yeah, weekly is uh, a bit of a... <laughs> that, that that was the original plan, weekly. Yeah. It might have been an overestimate. Uh, we're, we're quite sort of sporadic, especially the fact that it's just me doing it at the moment as well. Uh, but I try and get something out at, at least every couple of weeks. So I think, I'm, I think I'm due to actually try and record something this week or next week, in fact. Right. But yeah, not quite weekly, but thereabouts. Yeah, I'm well. I have a podcast called Dailyish. That's I can, I can definitely test. I used, well, I, I sort of have a podcast called Dailyish. It's been months, I think, almost monthish. But yeah, it's uh, sometimes a, it's a grind putting out a podcast, and and I know also the the uh, the frustration and fun of doing a podcast about an artist. I do a podcast for, about you too, and and you know, there's downtime obviously for them as bands as creative entities or whatever and as prolific as Pharrell seems to be I'm sure there's still quiet times where you're just like okay do something so we have something to talk about <laughs> but uh yeah well that, that that was the idea originally we kind of thought we'd talk about um the latest kind of news and goings on and, and stuff like that but as you say there are those down times and we still wanted to put stuff out quite regularly so we had a slightly different concept um based on some stuff that was happening on instagram and also uh, on other podcasts like dissect i don't know if you've heard of that one uh, where uh, a guy called cole i don't know, I can't remember his surname chalucha or something um looks at every track on a certain album so he's you know looked at kendrick lamar Kanye west i think the the current one on spotify is lauren hill and we kind of wanted it to go down that way because if you look at the likes of pharrell yeah, he's been in the, in in the industry since the late '90s, producing other people, doing his own stuff, doing any RD stuff. So if you actually go back and look at all that material, kind of chronologic, chrono, I can't even say the word now, chronologically, yeah. uh, there's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of content. Um, so that was kind of what we originally decided to do actually start looking at individual videos and songs uh, and things like that and actually kind of try and work through them in some kind of order although we jump about a little bit and that gives us so much content you know i've got a spreadsheet which has got stuff in there for the next uh year easily and i think if i actually went through in detail i could probably plan out the next four or five years right. of doing a weekly show yeah yeah it's it's nice having an artist like like Pharrell, obviously, and in my case with you two, obviously, there's a back catalog. I think the, actually Dissect Podcast is the one, uh, one of my co-hosts on the YouTube podcast has referenced that as, as something that we want to try and do too, is like, yeah, just go pick any random track and just like spend half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever, um, going through it and figuring out stuff and pulling out details and things like that. So um, I wish you two was better at videos that would make it a much more interesting podcast <laughs> to dissect some of their videos, but that's a discussion for another podcast. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, in, in terms of some of the, we talked beforehand about uh, just obviously, you know, in two years, the, the gear and stuff that has maybe changed a bit as well that you're using to record the podcast. And um, and I was, I was listening back to that episode. And I know, you know, my own editing styles and EQing and whatever is obviously improved hopefully as well a bit. Um, and uh, we were, we were sounding echoey and tinny at times and things like that back in the day. But uh, uh, what's what what changes have you made gear wise to how you record and what you were used to record so nothing kind of over the top i still kind of listen to yourself and kyle talk about um stuff each week and that's what i really like about the kind of slightly different format of the the show now getting those ideas about software and hardware and stuff and i still haven't deep dived into that so i'm kind of sat here at the moment with um 
a I think late 2016 early 2017 MacBook Pro with the the touch bar thing um, I kind of wanted to upgrade the the computer itself just to make things a bit more smoother a bit faster um, I also invested in uh, logic Pro as opposed to using garage band which I was doing previously garage band kind of did the job um, at a basic level you know you can record you can edit you can output it quite easily um, but as I did just then, I have a tendency to um and ah quite a lot, which <laughs> I try and make a conscious effort not to do, but I'm very guilty of doing it quite regularly. So I wanted something where I could go through and kind of easily identify those things and strip out certain things automatically, uh, take out the silences and just automate a lot more stuff. So I invested the money in Logic Pro and I, I use that to record and edit now, although I'm uh, still completely lost pretty much every time I try and use it. Um just on that one, I guess, before you go too far, um, mm. for folks who are thinking that GarageBand to, to whatever upgrade, like whether it's Logic or um, Adobe's, uh, I'm blanking on it right now, but... Uh, Audition. Audition. Audition, yeah. Uh, what what was sort of like the, when you first like open up Logic and you're like, oh crap, or whatever, <laughs> that when you're trying to record the first time, what, what were some of the things that sort of helped you like get over that learning hurdle, do you think, if you remember back to... I actually uh, go back to other podcasters and their own podcasts quite a lot. So people listening to this podcast, I, I guess are probably into tech or sway that way kind of slightly. So a lot of people may know of Jason Snell, who used to work, I think it was Macworld and now works at Six Colors and does podcasts like Upgrade and The Incomparable and stuff like that. Um, he's put some like, you know, really good guides together. And he also talks about his own kind of podcasting setup and processes yeah. on up, upgrade itself, I think sort of semi-regularly. So I kind of go back to a lot of his stuff. I've got notes saved with things that he's published in terms of here's how you do these basic things in logic. Here's some commands you need. Here's, you know, when you strip silences, the kind of variables that work best for him and actually do work best for me. And then also, just trial and error and if all else fails i tend to actually tweet jason snell and ask him <laughs> directly and you know he, he is a uh, he's very giving with, with his time and his information and generally if i ask him a, a random question about podcasting he will reply and and help me out yeah yeah, he's a great. Uh, he was actually on. Uh, now that I think of it, way back in the day, I was actually in San Francisco and interviewed him at MacWorld. That's before. Yeah, whole obviously the world has changed a lot <laughs> since then. Nobody's at MacWorld anymore, I don't think. Uh, but uh, anyways, I digress. The uh, yeah, he's. I think he's like one of those folks who who loves the the medium and and will happily spend time even troubleshooting some random person like yourself or myself or whatever over Twitter or over the internet um and just cuz and and sometimes it's because I know for me too if people tweet at me with questions I'm usually like focused on something I should be working on but I'm stuck and a tweet is like a an easy kind of way to justify or, or get out of having to do the work that I'm supposed to be doing at the time. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fun. And that's, uh, that's, I think where podcasting, because it's still so new ish, relatively speaking, it, it is, uh, you know, a, a medium that people are happy to sort of help each other out in. And, and there isn't too much of that sort of snooty, uh, I'm too big to help you out or whatever kind of stuff, kind of vibe, I guess that, that comes from that. So, yeah. um, anyways, I interrupt you. So you're the software side, you upgraded to logic pro, uh, I don't know where we were headed next in the, in the chain, I guess, of audio, but uh, going from there. Um, yeah, and just in terms of a kind of, I, I guess, software, um, I, I also change where we host from as well. So I use uh, a service out in Australia called Wooshka, and they've got some really weird spelling of the name, so I won't try and spell it now. Okay. But they, they host all of our podcasts. They've got a nice player you can embed. Um, yeah, nice, nice little service, and they're free at the moment as well. In terms of like the hardware, Again, I can kind of listen to you guys talk about um, different audio interfaces and all these kind of weird and wonderful setups and things you can do, especially when you kind of do the live stream stuff as well. And that just, most of that just flies over my head. My mind just boggles thinking about it. So I've tried to keep it as, as simple as possible. And I've upgraded from a, I think previously I had like a little meteor mic thing, which you know kind of did the job around a table or on the desk in front of me. But I thought, if we want to actually do something with this podcast, I need to get at least a semi-decent microphone. So I spent some money on, what do I have? Uh, a Blue Yeti, I think it is. Um, 
and then yeah like a, you know a pop filter and and a yeah. stand that attaches to my desk you know an arm so i can kind of place it where i want to place it um and that's pretty much it you know i've got some other bits and pieces here in terms of like audio interfaces and stuff but i haven't quite been sort of brave enough to set them all up and fiddle around with them and and stuff like that at the moment like the microphone it just goes into a into a dongle as does everything with a, a modern macbook yeah. pro and then because it's usb and then into the computer and it records kind of nicely i don't have too many problems with it so that just kind of works for me at the moment and then if i do get issues with you know levels and stuff like that i can normally kind of tweak them in the in the edit afterwards so yeah. so it's not too bad um i do want to kind of delve in a little bit deeper uh in the future but i just kind of know it's you know, it's one of those rabbit holes you can kind of go into and you can be spending money forever. You can be tweaking stuff forever. You can be messing around with it forever. Um, so I need to kind of set aside some actual time to, to look at it properly and work out exactly what it is I need and what I can actually do with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a, a, a money pit. <laughs> and and the money doesn't often come back in the form of actual dollars in any real meaningful way, that's for sure. Exactly. So, uh, but yeah, you sound actually, compared to, I'm just listening, I was listening to the MP3 of our conversation from a few years ago, obviously, and, and you sound much, much clearer and less echoey. So that might have been, I don't know if it was the room that you were in maybe at the time too or whatever, but definitely things have, have improved in that regard as well. And I know, yeah, like I said, my own is issues or, or abilities have, have improved, I hope as well. Um, but actually, now that I think about it, I'm, I think I'm still sitting with the same gear that I had back when we chatted last time, more or less. I've moved my desk around, I think that's about, but otherwise I think I had the same, same more or less setup. Uh, the camera might be the only new thing now that I think about it, but um yeah, the uh, w with the process of, of your sh your show where you've got I listened to a few of the episodes and you've got you know interviews sometimes with folks or, or co-hosts or whatever um, and and actually have had the opportunity to meet the band right as uh, part of yep. it which is a pretty cool thing that I think one of those things that people don't think of as far as a benefit of podcasting maybe is like a um, obviously the especially if you're working with I, I I've never connected with you two directly but had opportunities to talk with folks who are connected with them and stuff like that and things that wouldn't happen if you didn't have a pocket it's like if you're just joe on the street or whatever um they were not going to sit and chat with you but uh but yeah what was what were some of the i guess on the technical side i guess how are you doing some of the interviews and, and things like that are you just doing skype as we are right now or what what have you been doing it's yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mixture it depends who i'm with really so um originally i had a co-host who was based out in new york uh, and we would both record on essentially the same stuff he said, right, what do I need? What have you got? I told him what I had. Uh, he went and bought that stuff as well. We would record our own audio. He'd send it over to me. I'd kind of edit it together. But now obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but now he's uh, he's kind of fairly busy with his own business and stuff, so it can't commit every week. So what I tend to do every couple of weeks is put a call out on Instagram or Twitter. I get a bunch of people message me saying they want to kind of jump on and talk about whatever the next song is we're going to be talking about. Um, and then, yeah, it varies. Some people will have um, laptops set up and they're able to record themselves and uh, bounce that audio and send it over to me because a lot of people that want to talk about music actually make music themselves. Mm -hmm. Some people either don't have the means to do so or uh, don't want to spend the time doing so. And I completely understand why, because it is a pain in the backside at times. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll record through, um, again, like audio hijack was another thing that I bought when, um, when I started doing this podcast, just again, mainly it's just a, a backup to record the conversation. Again, I haven't kind of delved into all the weird and wonderful things it can do. I know it can do a hell of a lot of stuff, but at the moment I have, two kind of different sessions that I use. One is a Skype call one is a FaceTime call. And that's pretty much it. So I use that as a backup. And then obviously Skype in the last couple of months has started to roll out the ability to record conversations you're having with people. So when I do record with somebody, I'll be recording my own stuff locally in Logic. I'll be doing audio hijack, which will be taking either the Skype or the FaceTime session, uh, the audio of both of us. And then if I'm on Skype, I'll, if I remember, I'll hit the record button in Skype as well, just for a, a kind of a secondary backup as well. Right. Yeah, that's one thing I actually haven't messed around with too much. I think I'm, I'm still wary of Skype. And obviously, like having something like audio hijack in the background um, is a great option to just that's that's why I think I 
tell folks, and I'm, I'm always impressed by, I, I work with some consulting clients and stuff, and they'll have picked up Audio Hijack at some point along the way and, and not really know why, but they're using it as a backup and don't, yeah, like you said, it's kind of like they know there's way more to it than what they're even using it for, but at least, if nothing else, it's kind of like buying a backup hard drive for your Mac and you just plug it in and Time Machine does it. You don't know what it's doing and you hopefully never have to even touch it, but it just kind of works and, and you know, it the Skype recording hopefully works generally and things like that, mm-hmm. or doing like the double end or like you said, with of having people record their own end. And um, that's always a, a thing that I think people are, at least some folks I've worked with are, are reluctant to like put that on their, their guests to like record, ask them to record their end. Cause it obviously it can be a little bit confusing. Um, but I think everybody who then hears the end result of that, where they sound so much better, obviously then, and uh, like you and I are recording, obviously you're recording your end, and I have a recording of it, and if you know time doesn't permit for you to send it to me, or the internet from Helsinki doesn't <laughs> behave properly, or whatever, I do have a copy of your audio. But obviously, in a perfect world, your obviously na- recorded on your end is going to sound infinitely better than whatever we get sent down the Skype Skype chain. So, um, but yeah, it's very cool. And I how, has the Skype? Have you used the Skype recording at all? Yes, or is it just kind of? I've used it. Yeah, I've used it a couple of times. I've hit record, but I've never actually gone back in there and listen back to it to see if it's any good um it's literally just been like a redundancy thing you know just in case yeah and you know there have been a couple of occasions in the past where we've recorded our own audio then the person at the other end has said oh yeah actually uh something crashed or i didn't press the right button or whatever it might be so that's when that's those odd times where i do delve into audio hijack and i pull out that file and you know i I thank the audio hijack gods that they uh (laughs) they managed to do that for me yeah yeah, every almost every Mac podcaster needs to just say a prayer for Rogue Amoeba that they stick around and keep making the cool stuff they do. <laughs> uh, Most definitely. So you mentioned a couple of times, uh, we're kind of jumping all over, I know, but like you mentioned um, using Instagram as a place for finding potential co-hosts and stuff. And I'm just curious, is that, I mean, that might be just because it's a music-focused podcast and there's a lot of people obviously on Instagram that are connected to music uh, or to, to Pharrell in particular maybe, but uh, what what... So why and how does Instagram work better for you than something like Twitter or Facebook or whatever, any of the other number of platforms? There's, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one is my, my co-host um, has a very large following just privately himself. Uh, if you want to go follow him, he is at King of Creams, Creams with a Z at the end, because obviously that's how the cool kids spell stuff these yeah. days. If it <laughs> Z's on everything, um, but he's kind of fairly well known in uh, our kind of community, in the sneaker community, and stuff like that for his collections that he has. Um, so yeah, so he he had a really large following. I think around ten or eleven thousand or something like that. It's even higher now. So originally we, you know, we were just leveraging that basically i don't have that kind of following i have maybe i don't know four or five hundred or something but there was that originally and then also i think instagram lends itself to more artistically inclined people i guess that's one way of describing it so people that are into kind of popular culture art music you know the, the kind of people we're, we're trying to reach out to basically um and I think Instagram does a fairly good job of helping you discover stuff as well. If you go into the search thing, the the algorithm they they apply there to kind of show you related stuff or stuff from friends of friends and things like that is actually pretty good. I'll jump in there maybe a few times a week and I'll always see new things I hadn't seen elsewhere that actually do interest me. Whereas Facebook, you know, I used to use that quite heavily. I don't tend to anymore because you just seem to have to pump money into it. And that money doesn't always get you kind of what you want. Uh, in Twitter, I have a love hate relationship with Twitter. I use, I use it every day, you know, kind of personally, I interact with a lot of people there. I've met a lot of people there, but in terms of actually for me, for reaching people for the podcast, when I did spend money there, it didn't really do much. And Twitter just kind of is a, a dumpster fire at times <laughs> yeah you know, I, th- I think for our podcast we have we've had generally across the board really positive responses and stuff like that uh we've been very very lucky so far um but yeah twitter is just one of those places where if there is any negativity ever it, it will be there basically right. um and not that the negativity necessarily bothers me but it's just like 
well, if I'm not getting my money's worth from it anyway, like, why am I really going to bother? Yeah. So I, I tend to just push stuff from my website. It shares it automatically on Twitter. I might retweet a few things on there occasionally, but I don't tend to use it. It tends to be Instagram where, where we do most of the, the promotion and the interaction and engagement. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, each show is kind of different in terms of the audience it attracts, obviously, and then where it goes. And, and even the question of like, I know a lot of podcasters sometimes wonder, like, should I set up a Instagram and Twitter and Facebook per show? Or, you know, in our case, it, good stuff. We have the network account, but then do we set up sh accounts for each individual show? And so Show Me Your Mic has a Twitter account, and I think that's all I've done. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've definitely have done a, an Instagram account. And it, it's kind of like that, yeah chicken and egg thing whether you it doesn't feel like it's working sometimes but then we don't really put a lot of effort into it so that obviously it can't work if we don't put a lot of effort into it yeah but then if it, is it going to be worth the effort if we yeah so um that's always a struggle obviously for all of us who are you know doing this as a part-time or hobby or whatever and um and, and type of thing but uh it's a, it's a good thing to keep in mind too as, as far as why you might try one platform over the other or to experiment anyways at least long enough to to really get a, a good sense of whether it's really working versus just uh i just find instagram is full of like uh whenever we've posted stuff on there if i've done stuff even with my business it's it's other i'll get you know if i hashtag something like podcast or podcast editor or whatever i i just get a bunch of other podcast editors who like it thinking i'm looking for that and like it's just kind of this circle jerk of like <laughs> all these people who yeah. are looking for podcast editors that don't really there's but nobody who's actually looking for podcast editor is going on instagram and searching that hashtag uh, but yeah i digress it's it can go yeah, it can go either way, obviously. And I think, especially if you have someone, like you said, with your co-host who, you know, you can leverage a, a large following in a similar or adjacent uh, vertical, I guess, uh, it can definitely help to sort of boot, bootstrap or kickstart your, uh, your your own account or your own uh, promotion on there. So you, you've mentioned a few times, sort of, I don't know if it was just a, maybe a, a turn of phrase, but the putting money into it, are you actually doing some a bit of advertising in some of these platforms to try getting the word yeah. out about the show? Yeah, and it's something I'd recommend to most people as well. At least, you know, just set aside, even if it's a small amount, you know, like $50 that you're going to split up between a few different platforms, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, for example. And you just run, you know, you spend a little bit of time, you know, sorting out your audience, where you want to target it, stuff like that. And then just spend, you know, $10, $15, whatever it might be, and just see what it kind of gets you, basically. And I... I have done that. I've put more money than that into into each of the platforms. And as I say, Twitter and Facebook haven't really bought that much. Uh, Facebook will get quite a lot of reach, semi-decent engagement, but doesn't get us a lot of – we don't see like an uptick massively right. in the, the listeners or subscribers or anything. Twitter tends to do nothing really unless it gets – liked or retweeted by someone else that's kind of fairly prominent um instagram so far for us has been uh the best place to do stuff and especially because i have somebody that works with me that does a uh, custom art for for each episode now as well nice. and obviously with instagram being a place that's based around you know those visual images it really helps to have some good art that you can kind of put out and and show to people and that actually gets them engaging and looking at what you're you're posting about and it also helps that you know the subject we're talking about uh pharrell and nerd they they tend to be the most active on instagram as well although they do have facebook accounts twitter accounts um a lot of people in the area are shifting over to Instagram now. So, so that helps us as well to, to reach those audiences that are already engaged with him on those platforms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, so you're, are you generally like when you're posting or promoting something, I guess you're doing like a specific episode maybe as a, a bit of like a, with an audio video, whatever component possibly to sort of draw people in and then link them back to your podcast site or the Apple podcast, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So we, I use the custom art and I just share that as generally an image. Sometimes we get like a, an animated image, a, a, a GIF or whatever it renders it as is on Instagram or video. Um, and yeah, you know, I'll only put a small amount into that. It may just be $10, $15 or something. And we just, you know, run it for a few days. But a, across Instagram, it generally works quite well. Um, and again, yeah, we'll always include all the relevant hashtags, the the links back to the show. Um, we'll tag all the relevant people in there. And we do find that by doing that, we do get 
uh, one, the advertising itself works, but also we see more kind of well-known people and verified accounts that are kind of linked in that area, um, a link to, let's say, Pharrell and those kinds of people actually seeing it as well and liking it and talking about it and sharing it in places as well. So, so that really helps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I guess that's that is the benefit too. Again, of of being a, a fan or a band, uh, a fan podcast, I guess, is that you do have that. You know, you if you put, throw the Pharrell hashtag on, obviously there are actual fans looking for that. <laughs> that that hashtag tracking exactly it, uh similar to what i do with youtube or whatever too and so um yeah it, it kind of lends itself a little easier that way i guess than than when you're sort of pitching a service per se and and, and that kind of thing so that's a, a good thing to keep in mind and i think i would guess a lot of podcasters you know they're they're doing the hobby thing and they're trying to like just sort of grow it organically and, and see what happens with it and um but i think it's i know i've tried it every so often too just throwing a bit of money at it and on the advertising side just to see what happens and i think with the the analytics platform as long as you're you know just like anything else you can waste a lot of money if you wanted to and you alluded to that too where if you threw a bunch of money in and weren't even tracking it and just sort of thinking that you know all of a sudden you're getting all this growth maybe and you think it's because your your money that you're spending but actually it's because you know some other random person on facebook shared it in a popular page or whatever um it's good to yeah look at your google analytics and your podcast analytics whatever your platform provides and and figure out where the folks are coming from and, and sort of at least be uh i i know all of us you know we don't look at the stats every five minutes hopefully but but you know just be at least aware week to week what your stats are like so that or episode to episode anyways so you can sort of account for where some folks and why you all of a sudden have growth and um have you seen something similar in terms of like having a you know uh the episode you you linked to me to or, or sent to me uh sort of in when you signed up i guess to come on the show was the where you actually got a chance to interview uh what, one of the founding band members of nerd right if i or the yep. Neptunes. Or both yep, Shay right? Haley from yeah. NERD. Yep, and uh, I would I would guess that you know you see a bit of uptick there just in terms of you know interviewing famous person A <laughs> generally uh, gives you a bit of more of an audience for that episode at least if nothing else. Um, but maybe just to talk about I guess that experience of finally getting to or getting to yeah meet in in person some of the folks that you've been t- talking about and fans of. Well, yeah, I'll be honest. We're only twenty one shows in, and I thought something like this would take hundreds i thought it would take you know years and years to kind of get to that level now i'm lucky enough because i've been a fan since the late 90s early 2000s so i know um a lot of the people that were have worked and do work in and around uh, pharrell and nerd and um, people that work for you know his clothing line and his um creative company and stuff like that so i'm lucky that i can kind of touch bases with some of those occasionally um not on a you know personal level i'm not particularly you know friendly with any of them but there are a few people i know i can reach out to if i really need to yeah and uh yeah the whole thing kind of came about as a, quite a big surprise in fact um i know pharrell's guitarist brent paschke so you if people who go back and listen to my podcast you'll see a couple of interviews with him we've done these interviews over the years and he's become a bit of a friend so when they were coming over here to Finland in the summer as part of their kind of summer festival tour, he you know hooked us up some passes and we were going to meet up. And I thought, great, I get to see, I get to meet Brent, you know, finally after knowing him for all these years. He said he might be able to introduce us to some people. I thought, great, you know, that's I couldn't wish for much more, you know, in these early days. Uh, and as it happened, as the the festival approached, I reached out to Pharrell's uh, project manager and said, you know, I know it's unlikely, but if there's the chance he has five minutes, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there. He's going to be there. Could we do something, you know, and unsurprisingly, I got a, a very quick, uh, yeah, no, sorry, that's not going to happen. <laughs> he, you know, he's at that level now where, you know, he flies in and flies out and has a police escort to and from the hotel you know yeah. um so there's, there's not much chance of getting anything done but she said you know well, i'll reach out to um the management teams of shay and chad who are also in nerd those two guys uh, are well known for not really doing any press they do very little press when there's a new album out you may see the odd interview here and there and some of the the bigger name magazines and websites but generally they don't do much especially shay over the years he's this kind of 
man of mystery almost. He has this kind of mythical following because nobody really knows much about him. So I didn't really expect anything to happen. I expected a, a, a polite, you know, sorry again. And then I don't know how or why, but Shay actually agreed to the podcast. I got an email back an hour later saying Shay's agreed to it. Um, you know, send us, you know, you need to send us your questions um, and tell us how long you want and all that. So I kind of went back and they said, no, that's way too long. He's way too busy. <laughs> and you can scrap question one, three, nine, eleven, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I had to kind of tailor it quite a lot and tweak it. But I think, you know, they agreed to. Was it the questions were because, I mean, we are, you don't have to get into specifics, but like, was it kind of because they were too personal or is it just like they didn't want, he didn't whatever reason he might not want to talk on that or controversy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing kind of controversial, but yeah, stuff that's more on a personal level, which I think fans of his want to know about, because like I say, he is this kind right. of man of mystery. Yeah. <laughs> we, we as fans, even me as what I would class as, you know, a, a super fan, I guess. So it's a horrible term to call yourself, but I guess that's the category. You do have a podcast into. about it. So it's Exa yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> Um, even I don't really know much about him away from the band. So some of the questions were around that sort of stuff, you know, what else is he up to and how have things in the, in the group kind of changed over the years and how have roles right. changed and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, there were a few that I think maybe they thought they didn't want him going down those areas and giving away too much of his own information and stuff like that, which is completely understandable. And, Again, I think I asked for half an hour and they said, yeah, we'll give you like 10 to 15 minutes, basically. But I thought, well, this is, this is all a bonus. This is all yeah. more than I could have ever imagined. So I actually traveled up to the festival. Um, the people in the hotel where they were staying had actually heard of me for some reason. Um, so I kind of said, oh, I'm doing an interview with somebody is there a quiet space in the hotel? And they were like, yeah, yeah, we, we know what you're doing. Um, we'll, we'll give you a conference room for free and just go and park yourself in there for the day. I was like, okay, great. This is brilliant. Um, did the interview, the 15 minutes turned into about 45 minutes and got to the point where I had to say, look, I have to stop this because I'm going to end up getting in trouble here. I don't want to like, <laughs> yeah. he was happy to chat all day. Um, but I didn't want to push my luck with yeah, the people that helped or... arrange this. Yeah. And again, he actually ended up talking about a lot of the stuff that they asked me to cut out anyway. Yeah. So it was kind of, it, it was a win-win basically. Um, and as we kind of ended the, the kind of interview and the conversation, I said, look, this is really cheeky, but I'm in the same hotel as you right now. Can I get a picture of, you know, together for the podcast and stuff? And he was, you know, of course you can. Like, you don't even need to ask. Like, it's not a problem. So I said, well, can we meet now or do you need to get some rest? I can come and meet you later on at some point. Uh, and he said, well, obviously you're going to be at the show, aren't you? So we'll see you backstage. And I said, well, I've only got like, I've only got the VIP tickets. Um, so I said, I'm meant to meet Brent later. Maybe Brent can kind of link us up somehow. I don't know how it will work. And at that, Shay was just said, no, no, we're not having that. I will, as soon as I'm off this call with you, I will speak to the tour manager. Uh, they're going to arrange artist passes for you, for you and your girlfriend and your son. You're going to come in like, you know, see us and we'll meet up at some point. And nice. I, I was like, oh my God, this is great. And yeah, it got to the point where um, the tour manager was kind of calling me and saying, okay, we're going to get the Pharrell's personal security to travel over to the venue and get you the passes and bring them back. And, <laughs> and, I, and I was like, no, 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 please don't do that. No, no, we will, we will sort this out ourselves. You know, please yeah. don't go out of your way to do anything for me. And, um, yeah, we kind of, we, we got there and we, we met Brent and then Brent said, Oh, I'll introduce you to some of the band and the dancers. And we thought that's yeah, again, great. This is just an added bonus. I'm getting to meet, you know, some of these other people that are involved in the the whole kind of project. This is brilliant. And as we stood there chatting, my, my son kind of pulls my sleeve and says, daddy, daddy, look, look, Shay's over there. And I look over and Shay's kind of stood there, you know, sort of 20, 30 yards away. And he's looking over at us and I'm like, he doesn't look very happy. 
oh no i'm like he's woken up and he's realized he did not like that interview one bit <laughs> he looks pissed uh and he kind of looked over us and he, he kind of went steve steve come over here and we kind of went over and he was so lovely so nice came in gave me a hug um he was actually carrying a piece of paper at the time and the piece of paper was actually a picture that my son had drawn for him that we'd left at the hotel for him. Oh, nice. And he was, going, he was going around backstage, like showing everybody the drawing. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> awesome. th that was amazing. And we were stood there chatting and then my son's like, daddy, daddy, look, look Pharrell was over there. And because I was just in a, a, a bit of a blur, a bit of a haze, I hadn't realized we were actually in their own private backstage kind of dressing area. Yeah. So Pharrell was in his little trailer pacing backwards and forwards. He was on the phone or something. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm within 30 yards of Pharrell. Okay, my life is complete. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> this, it, won't, it can't get any better, can it? You know, yeah. you, you're that far away from your hero. You know, he's just over there getting on with what he gets on with. And at that point, he kind of stood at the door, got off the phone, and Shay kind of looked over at him and said, P, get out here. Come over here. And he comes over and stands there with us and starts talking to us and uh, was just, you know, lovely to us. He had, he didn't have to be. Yeah. Uh, again, I was kind of thinking, oh, he seems a bit pissed, you know, with these random people that are just hanging out in his kind of backstage area when he's getting ready to do his work. Um, and I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that if it was the other way around. But he was, yeah, extremely nice, extremely gracious, you know, thanked us for even doing the podcast and being out there kind of talking about him and the band and, you know, spreading their word and talking about the music and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it, it went from me going to kind of meet a friend there, uh, which were kind of already a highlight, to uh, then rapidly kind of snowballing into yeah. a, a, a very, very crazy 24 hours. And I think as far as the podcast goes, it, it's it's kind of not already peaked, but <laughs> you know there's, there's a lot more stuff we can do. But it doesn't get much better than being able to interview Shay from NERD when your podcast is about NERD. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's a really cool story, and that's uh, I know as a fellow, uh, I'm not a fan necessarily a fan of NERD, but you know as a music fan and and that picturing that same kind of interaction with you two in my case, or I'm sure listeners can put. You know, insert favorite band here or whatever and that it is i know listening to hearing other stories from u2 fans where it's like it does kind of often snowball like all the, you're just like because obviously the people who are on the other side of that gate so to speak are regular folks too and they remember what it's like for the most part unless they're dicks but they remember you know how it is to like meet someone famous and get the chance to like talk with them and they love that to give that to people as well when they can and when it's allowed and stuff and uh and yeah so that's it's a, it's a fun experience and i think that's where podcasting i think is a great in the, just like bo uh, blogging used to be back in the day and probably still is a little bit but like now it's podcasting and, and the celebrities on, and the musicians and whoever recognize podcasting as a viable medium to like promote themselves through and recognize that you have the ear of people that they can't necessarily get to and so yeah it's it's great when they uh, acknowledge that and appreciate that and obviously like you got to experience a bit of that with them and and now I mean now you just got to shoot for the next like our, our joke on the YouTube podcast is like obviously getting a member of the band on the show at some point in the future because they've been on the um, you talking you two to me the, the guys the sort of joke podcast you two was on and we were like kind of bitter and joking about how why would they be on that podcast and not ours but yeah you can shoot for like Pharrell to be on your show still and <laughs> And then that exactly, the peak, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we've still got Chad to go. Uh, yeah. We've still got obviously members of the band. And then, yeah, ultimately, the, the goal is Pharrell. I did kind of mention it. I said, oh, we'd love to get you on the podcast one day. And he graciously kind of gave me a smile and a nod. And yeah. off he went into the distance as if to say, <laughs> yeah, maybe one day, you know. But yeah, but yeah I, I don't know if it will happen anytime soon. But, but I think, yeah, we're, we're very lucky enough to, I, I think, the kind of community around uh pharrell has been going for such a long time now it, it's quite a tight community and people that work with him a lot of them were once involved in that community as well kind of at the grassroots yeah. so as you say they know what it's like to be a fan as well so i think there's there's always that kind of potential and that opportunity i think if we 
keep plugging away and trying to make the podcast better and you know just keep doing what we're doing basically yeah yeah exactly well that's cool that's a i think a great spot to, to end the interview on anyways but uh where can folks find you uh, find the podcast obviously and find you on, on the web if they want to if they're a, a pharrell fan a neptunes nard fan uh hip-hop fan in general i guess but wanting to sort of listen and learn more about what you're doing yeah, definitely. You can find me personally uh, at my website, superhelsinki.com. That's got all the, the social links and stuff. But if you just want to jump on Instagram or Twitter, uh, I'm at Steve R. Penny. And then if you want to check out the podcast itself, it's all oh God, What is my website? The Others, Others with a Z, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> dot net. Um, and again, we're others at others podcast on, I think all the social places. And then we've got you know, some merch some t-shirts and stickers and all that kind of stuff as well. If you go to othersmerch.com, should you actually like the podcast and want to you know, help support us in some kind of way. Nice. That's a, that's a cool little way of, uh, is that, that must be through like a Teespring or what, some sort of T yeah, it's or public, public, I think we like, use. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. Um, yeah, we've sold a few shirts and a few stickers, and I'm wearing one right now, actually. Nice. I still have to pay full price for them, even though I uh, <laughs> yeah. give them my designs and upload everything. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, they do some, they just do some like yeah, good quality stuff. So, so yeah, if, if anyone wants to kind of help support the uh, the podcast, you can jump on there and grab yourself a t-shirt, especially at the moment because there seem to be endless sales uh, around Christmas and New Year. Yeah, and it's actually one of those things, especially with how easy it is to do that on the internet these days, like the merchandise side of things, which you might feel like, and I know Kyle and I too, like, feels like, uh, who is going to want that? Why would you? Or whatever. But like, it is a, a great way to give fans or listeners of your stuff a way to promote your thing for you. And they often they'll be happy to do it because they, especially now with podcasting being such a, obviously a, a more common part of the regular conversations that are happening about what people are listening to, what podcast you listen to, that kind of thing. It isn't that weird. I remember, you know, years ago, it was like really weird to have like a podcasting shirt on or something like that, or a poster or a sticker or whatever. But these days, obviously it's really common and you're not really <laughs> looked down on in any way for having any of that kind of stuff. And and it can only help your show, obviously. And, and you might only make a buck or two or whatever off the sale of a shirt. It's not about the money. I don't think it's more the just getting people the chance to like celebrate the thing that you're doing and, and, talk about it promote it etc so uh, yeah exactly and it, i was just gonna say very briefly yeah we um we have a few t-shirts up there and but the podcast itself doesn't make any money from it all the money we do make from it i give to the the guy that designs the logos for me right so that goes elsewhere that goes back into the community you know he's a, a big fan as well and um so i want to help support him and his artwork and but yeah it, it's been great so far we've had a lot of people actually buy merchandise and then, like you say, it's also a marketing opportunity. I'm going to hopefully buy a, a bunch of T-shirts at some point in the ne near future and a bunch of stickers and send them out to some of the, the kind of listeners and some of the people we know out there that are in this kind of community. And, yeah, most people are kind of happy to, to wear that kind of stuff and help promote us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, if you're, you never know if you, whatever your podcast might be about, if you meet the subject of your podcast, like you did, handing over a sticker or a shirt or whatever to somebody like that is, is a pretty cool way to like give a tangible real world uh, thing. Because uh, often, sometimes, as we discussed before we started recording this, is sometimes it feels like you're shouting into the void, but actually having like a, a real thing that then you see on a photo somewhere someday later or whatever is a pretty cool way to see your creation out in the real world. So, um, but cool. Thanks, Stephen, for doing this. Thanks for coming back to the show and uh, and being a great uh, first guest back on. Uh, my interview <laughs> skills are a little rusty, but uh, you made it easy to do. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to whenever, whether it's weekly-ish or, or monthly-ish, or <laughs> new episodes of the Others podcast, and hope you get your chance to, uh, to meet Pharrell and the rest of the crew someday in the near future. So, thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it, Chris. All right. Uh, and uh, we will, I'm going to turn off the live stream as well. Thanks to anybody who happens to watch or is watching later or wherever you happen to be. If you want to listen to this in full because you're confused as to what we're talking about because you just got the last five minutes or something, goodstuff.fm slash smym for show me your mic uh, is where the episode, the podcast episode will live on. And then there'll be links from there to the YouTube channel and, and other video versions if, you, if you're so inclined. And uh, thank you for watching. Feel free to follow, subscribe, like, thumbs up, whatever, wherever you happen to be, whatever the thing is, <laughs> hearts, all that stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn off the stream. Thanks for watching. Bye.